I want to explain Monte Carlo simulation and I want to provide an application to retirement savings and we'll do this in Excel. Uh, but before we do that, let me give you a brief introduction to what a Monte Carlo simulation is. It's really a method for dealing with uncertainty. So instead of using averages to determine the values, we do numerous replications to produce a distribution. So we keep trying things and each time we get different values. Okay, if we use the average return for a stock to determine how much money we'll have in the future, we simply get one number. But we know that if the return you get is random, if it's not, if it's not constant, right? If sometimes it's 10% and sometimes it's 8% and sometimes it's 25% and sometimes it's minus 6%, you're going to get a different outcome. So we could have more or less in our account than if we use the average number. So on the Monte Carlo simulation, we're going to make, for example, the interest rate random and it's going to change. And as it changes, it's going to give us a different value. Okay. And when we do this, we can also, when we're in the spreadsheet, change the standard deviation and see how that impacts our calculations. So you're probably familiar with the normal distribution, that bell shaped curve that's symmetric. In the middle, you have mu, which is the mean or the average value. And you've seen this before around 68% of the values fall between plus or minus one standard deviation. Okay. A little bit more than 95% fall plus or minus two standard deviations and um, 99.73% 90, oh, fall plus or minus three standard deviations from the mean. So, you know, when we get, if we say the average return is 12%, you know, sometimes it's going to be 9%, sometimes it's going to be minus 12%, sometimes it's going to be 25%, right? It's not always going to be 12%. So we'd like to see how this impacts our retirement savings outcome. So let's look at the following example. Suppose you have $25,000 in your retirement fund and you'll be saving $10,000 per year at the end of the year for the next 40 years. How much are you going to have in your fund when you retire? Okay, let's assume that stocks have an average return of 10% with a standard deviation of 12%. And if we assume that you'll earn the average of 10% every year, we can just find the future value of of your savings in 40 years as the future value of the 25,000 plus the future value of the amount you save each year, which is an annuity. So let's take a look at um, a spreadsheet here. So I've done the calculation for you here. It's 25,000 savings per year, 10% um, is the interest rate 40 years. And you've probably done this before, but we can look at the formulas. And the formulas here, there's a future value function. And the first argument is the interest rate. The second argument is the number of periods. The third argument is the annuity or the amount that's um, saved each year. And then the, the fourth argument is the present value. Okay, I put it in as negative because you're taking $25,000 out of your own pocket. It's a cash outflow and you're putting it in the bank. So that's going to then give us a positive future value. And then down here, this is the future value of the savings each year, where, you know, minus C3 is the 10,000 you save each year, and then I sum them up. So if you do the calculation, you see that um, your 25,000 grows to a bit over 1.1 million. Your 10,000 saved each year for those 40 years works out to be um, a bit over 4.4 million and your total is a little over 5.5 million. So you just get one number here. Okay, We're assuming that you put your money in at the end of the period. So this is a, um, an ordinary annuity. So let's see how this looks if we do a Monte Carlo simulation. So I've set up this spreadsheet here and I've I'm going to make the returns random. 
Okay, so it's not always going to be 10%. Remember, it says standard deviation of 12%. So it could be more some years, it could be less some years. Okay, it can change. And I've got here 40 years that you'll be saving. So here's our return. I'm going to use the norm inverse function. And I don't know how well you can see it down there. It says probability, mean, and standard deviation. So the probability, we want that to be random. So there's actually a function that generates normal random distributions. And if I put in R-A-N-D, open parenthesis, and close parenthesis, it'll just keep changing that number. And then I'm going to put in the mean as 10%, and the standard deviation is 12%. And I'm going to close that up, and I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to put a dollar sign here and a dollar sign here because I'm going to copy this information down. Alright, now let me just show you. Over here, if you hit calculate now, it keeps changing the number. Let me make that uh, a percentage so it's a little bit easier to see. Okay, so 0.29 percent and let's go back to our uh, formulas and let's calculate now. I got a lot of negative numbers. See, we get some positive, we get some negative. It changes, right? Some high numbers, some low numbers, some close to zero. What's our ending value going to be? Our ending value is going to be equal to this 25,000 in savings times 1 plus the interest rate, which is right here, okay, plus the 10,000 we save each year. Let me hit enter. So after the first year you have 32,485.92. Of course if the interest rate were different you'd have a different amount here. Okay, the second year, and let me copy this formula down to here, and this formula is going to be slightly different. It's going to be this value times 1 plus the interest rate, 1 plus C15, okay, again, plus this. Let's put a dollar sign in there so we can copy the formula down. All right, so let's see if we can copy this down. Control, shift, down arrow key. Whoops, that goes forever. Didn't really want to do that. Let me, uh, hit escape here. Didn't want to go all the way down there. I only wanted to go to 40. Let me tell you what, let me just copy this down myself. Okay, so we have different values. So this is the value in year 40. And I'm going to put this value, this is in cell D53. So this is our first repl replication. D53. What I had there. Oh, you remember every time I hit the the um, enter key, it changes the interest rate. So this is a random sort of thing. Sometimes it's for it's crazy, right? I mean, sometimes you had once you had 14 million. Now you have two million, six million. All right, very crazy when it does this. All right. Now I'm going to do the Monte Carlo simulation over here. Okay, first I'm going to put in that first replication here, which is in cell C7. Okay, so I'm just going to hit enter there. All right, and I want to, I'm going to replicate this a thousand times. So let's see if we can do that. So how do we do that? Okay, we want to fill this with a thousand numbers. So let's see here. Okay, you go to series, so just under the summation sign is that little down arrow key. This is a column, and I'm going to go 1 to 1,000. Okay, and it's going to fill this, and if you scroll all the way down, you can see it goes all the way to 1,000. All right, now I want to populate this thing, and I'm going to do this. Let's see if I can uh, do this correctly. 
All right, what I want to do is I want to fill this table up here. So let's see, control shift, let's see if this works this time. There we go down to a thousand. Got to get back to the top here. And we're going to go to data. What if, and we want a data table. We don't have any row input and the column input, we just pick a blank column. The reason we do that is that Excel is going to need a cell to do the calculations in. So let me just hit enter and say OK. And notice that it populated my whole table here. So let me see if I can um, go Control Shift down arrow key. And let's make these dollar signs so these are easier to see. All right, and we don't really need the, the pennies. And I'll get rid of the pennies here too. So you can see different values. Let me, let me go all the way down to the bottom here. Let me see where the bottom is, and I'll just remember that. That is in cell 1013. So let's see what the average value is. Okay, average. This goes from H14 to H1013. Notice that, that that's pretty close to what we had before when we had certainty. And if we wanted to just recalculate, okay, it, it changes. It changes pretty close. What's the median? Remember, the median is the middle score, so it's not affected by outliers, right? If there's one really huge number, what's in the middle? The middle score. Again, we're going to go the same numbers, so from H13 to H10, I'm sorry, H14 to H1013. And so the median is, the middle score is 4,600,000. 4, okay, so it's a little lower, so there are some really big values in here. Let's also look at some percentiles so you can get an idea. Okay, so I'm going to use percentile.einc, and that means it includes everything. And I'm going to do the same array, um, H14 to H1013. And I have to tell it the percent I want, and I'm going to take the 10th percentile. So right here. So 90% of the time, you're going to be above 2.2 million. How about if we copy that down to the uh, 25th percentile? 75% of the time, you're going to be above 2.39 million. And again, every, every time we calculate, it gives us a different number, right? Things change. How about the minimum and maximum values? Okay, min, again, H14 to H1013. Okay, so you get a very, you know, it's possible you could wind up with only 757,000 in your account instead of the 5.6 million you expect. Now, you don't really expect to get that, but it, it can happen. Okay, and then the maximum value would be, again, um, H14. H1013, you could get 28 million. And again, as we recalculate, these things change a lot. Okay, you can have, you know, some really great years. The average is always about the same, 5.6 million. But you can see that that this is a thousand replications, and you could do 10,000 replications if you wanted, or 100,000 replications. But you can see that there is a chance you'll have very little money for retirement. There's a chance that you'll have an enormous amount of money for retirement. The average value is about the average we had before, which was five and a half million. Okay, let's make the standard deviation bigger. Let's see how that changes things. Okay, you make a bigger standard deviation, you still see, you see this changing more. 
okay it still hovers around you know about the same value but things change quite a bit when you have a bigger standard deviation how about a smaller standard deviation so two percent and again we do the recalculations this doesn't change much at all right so you can see that you know the risk um, of the returns that you're getting do you get a two percent standard deviation do you get a twenty percent that's really going to impact how much money you have so e again each one of these is a replication and each time you get different values okay with the small standard deviation there aren't they're almost all about the same but when you have a bigger standard deviation you go back to 12 percent you get some, quite a bit of variation you have some years where you get quite a bit of money some years where you have um, a lot of money some years where you don't have very much at all okay it varies quite a bit so this is a great way to do a Monte Carlo simulation to understand the risk of putting your money away in a retirement savings plan that even though you expect to get 10 percent you're not guaranteed to have this five and a half million you may have quite a bit more okay as is the case in some of these replications seven million here and nine million here you may have you know quite a bit less 1.7 million but it gives you a much better understanding of what's going on um, when you're saving for retirement